Okay, by now we understand that a class is a blueprint and that we can create instances of that blueprint. Let's go ahead and make a new one. We'll call this laptop and we're going to discuss what are called constructors and destructors and look a little bit at what happens under the hood when a class is created and destroyed memory here. All right, so we've got our class here and we're going to go ahead and flesh this out a little bit. Say include, we want QDebug. And inside of QDebug, let's go ahead and we're going to just add a comment here. This is our constructor. This is a function that gets called automatically when the class is created. If you've taken a C++ class, you know there's such a concept as a default constructor. We're not using the default constructor because we're inheriting QObject, and this is the constructor for QObject. If we switch to the source view, you can see that we have a QObject parent, and it's just a pointer to a QObject. Now, a pointer, remember a pointer is just a location in memory, so that object exists somewhere out there in memory. We're just giving it that location. This is part of memory management, and we're really going to dive into this into the future, but just understand that there is a parent-child hierarchy here going on. So when the parent's destroyed, the child's automatically destroyed with it. Let's go back here, and we're going to make what's called a deconstructor. A deconstructor takes a special syntax, which may look a little bit weird. You have what's called a tilde. If you don't know what that key is, it's on the upper left-hand part of your keyboard, usually in front of the one key. And it's the class name with the ending parameters or ending parentheses here. And then we're just going to refractor and add definition. And here's our deconstructor. So this is called when created. And this is called when destroyed. Hence constructor deconstructor. So why would you need these things? Well, it's actually pretty simple. You need them so that you know the lifespan of your object in memory. Let's say, for example, you're opening like a TCP socket to a server or a file or a database connection. You may want to actually open that up when it's created. And if your class is destroyed, you're going to want to free those resources up. Remember, C++ is very powerful, but at the same time, very stupid in the sense that you have to tell it exactly what you want it to do. All right, let's go back into our header here and let's just add some things in. We're going to say int wait, qstring, name. We're just making some variables. We're going to make a function there, and that is a function prototype, meaning we're going to actually implement that in our class file. And we're going to say void test. We're going to make another function prototype here. And you remember the reason why you would make a function prototype instead of doing this in the header is so that you could actually segregate this thing off into a library or a shared object or DLL, whatever it's called on your system. And you would hand the end developer your header file, just this, and they would never ever see the implementation. All right, so let's look at as kilograms and test. We're going to add some functionality into here. We're going to say return this dot wait. Notice I said dot, but it makes this little arrow. Let's revisit that. When I hit dot on the keyboard, bang, it automatically makes that arrow. So what's the difference between this dot and this arrow? Well, it has to do with whether or not it's a pointer. And I'll show you here in just a second. Let me finish this out. We're going to times that by 0 0.453592. No, I'm not a genius. I have that written in my notes. So this dot, and we want wait. Because it's a pointer, this is the word this. It points to, hence the arrow, points to a location. We're pointing to the weight variable. We know this is, a, uh, this is a pointer. How do we know this? Because this is intrinsically part of every class. There's an invisible variable somewhere right here 
that looks something like this. So really what it's saying is take this class, make a pointer, call the variable this, and it literally points to this object, which is why it's called this. Very confusing, but when you talk about the concept of this, know that it is created right here. And actually, let me put that in quotes here. This is automatically created for us. So we can say things like this.name and then set it to something. Remember, you can create multiple instances of this blueprint. So this is the current instance you're working on. That'll be readily apparent here in just a minute, but let me finish this up real quick. We're going to say qinfo this and name and we want as kilograms. So really all we're doing for our test function here is we're saying qinfo, so we're going to send some information out on the screen. We're going to say this. Remember, this is a pointer, so it'll give us the memory location the name variable, and then we're going to return a double from as kilograms. Let's go ahead and go in here and let's change our constructor around a little bit. What we want to do here is be able to name these laptops. We're going to say qString name. Whoops. And you see this little light bulb. You can click or you can press alt return, but if you click this, applies changes to definition. In other words, it automatically modifies it for you so you don't have to remember to type that. Now we can say this.name equal name. Notice that's a bit confusing. We have name and name. This.name is actually declared up in the header here. Ta-da! Right here. However, name for the function is different. They're two different variables. And you determine that by saying this.name if you did something like this, notice how the color changed. And well, it's a gamble which one's actually going to change. So when in doubt and you have a naming conflict, always use this. Now that we have this in there, let's go ahead and just put in some info so we can see what's going on. We're just going to say this constructed, and let's get this in here. That was a little bit, bit confusing. Let's get this in here. All right. So we're just going to pump out when it's constructed, and when it's deconstructed, we have as kilograms and a test function in here. Let's actually use this bad boy. So we're going to use our laptop header, and let's make a laptop. I'm going to call this one mine. And this is how we access our constructor. We just use the parentheses. And you can see we have a pointer to a Q object, which is a null pointer, which means there's nothing there. Sounds a little confusing. And what we can do is just enter a zero, meaning there's nothing. And let's give it a name. Now you may be saying, now wait a minute, zero and nothing are two different things from our last couple videos. Well, that's actually true. A null pointer, when it's set to zero means there's just nothing there. Null pointer and zero are pretty much the same thing because a pointer is a memory location. So if you say zero, that means there's no location in memory. It's a bit confusing, but it's one of the caveats you need to understand. So I'm going to say laptop yours. And we can do the same thing. We just say null pointer. And to do that, we would just say the keyword null which is going to get translated for us under the hood to a zero. Doing that for illustrative purposes, you may see it both ways, and I don't want you to get confused between zero and null when it comes to pointers. They're basically the same thing. And it's going to say zero as a null pointer constant. It's kind of going to give you a warning there. Now, the reason why we're setting the parent to zero is because the main function doesn't really have anything going on for us here. Meaning, well, this is not a Q object. This is just a function. What we should be able to do is give us a reference to A. 
That way, when this is deleted, actually I should say when this is deleted, this will automatically get deleted as well. Let's go ahead and do that. No, it's not really needed because we're doing what's called an operation on the stack. And we're gonna get into memory management in a future section, but this is all on the stack, quote unquote, just burn that into memory, which means it's gonna get deleted automatically. So we could definitely just do this and it would work just fine. But we would just basically wanna get rid of this annoying warning here. So we're gonna say, Now, if you're wondering what type of object, you notice how we used a Q core application, can we reference into this? Well, anything that is a subclass or inherits Q object. And because we know that the, the class, the Q core application is a Q object class, see, inherits Q object, we can use that. That's why Q object is so fundamental to understand because everything, almost everything, inherits off Q object. You can do some amazing things with it. So we're gonna say mine, whoops, mine dot wait, and I want my laptop to be nice and light because I travel. Yours, and let's see, yours is a bit heavier because you, well, you like to do like online gaming or something. I like to do online gaming, don't get me wrong, but you're going to have a heavier laptop. Save that, run it. Let's make sure nothing goes boom. And you can see laptop, my laptop was constructed. Laptop, your laptop was constructed. Notice they are two different memory addresses. You can just take the last few numbers and see they are different. We have 760 and 780. So they air in different memory locations. Close that out. One thing you might not have noticed, and let's redo that, is there was no deconstructor message. See, I stopped the application, but it didn't say deconstructed. Well, that's because we're following the flow of the Q core application, meaning the whole, whole application stopped. So there actually is messages out here you wouldn't see. Let's go ahead and let's actually fix that for demonstrative purposes. Put this here and let's move this up here like this. Notice how suddenly it eh, can't do that because we don't have this. So let's just say this. Move that around and let's go ahead and call this. If you're getting a little confused between this star and this ampersand and which one's which, remember that when you see the star, it's a pointer to. Think of it just like somebody standing in traffic pointing you which direction you need to go. When you see this ampersand, that's a reference to, meaning it's somebody telling you, hey, go to this location. In other words, think of this actually returns the pointer. All right, so we're gonna go here. And from here, let's go ahead and add in some functionality. Let's make another one. So we've got a laptop in here and we're gonna say machine.test. Things seem pretty simple. Let's go ahead and add this and we're gonna say mine. There's a couple issues going on here that we really need to understand fundamentally. Let's go ahead and run this and see what happens. You can see now, we can see the full life cycle here. We can see, and we're just gonna follow my laptop here. It's constructed, my laptop test, and then my laptop deconstructed. So that object no longer exists out in memory. And because we've set the parent right here, we've set A and then given a reference to A, if it were anywhere other than the stack and we killed the application, it would automatically get deleted for us. We wouldn't have to worry about memory management. 
That's a pretty awesome feature, Cute, by the way. If that was a bit confusing, don't worry. We're going to talk about memory management in future videos. But there's something else lurking here you should really understand. Look at this test function right here. We have a laptop, and we're passing that by reference, not by value. What happens if we pass it by value? You can see, uh-oh, suddenly, call to implicit delete copy constructor of laptop. What in the world is going on here? Well, it's Q object has been explicitly marked deleted here. Note passing an argument to the parameter machine. Basically what we're saying here is this object no longer exists because the stack will delete it. So your application comes in and it says, all right, run the main, run make laptops, starts here, does this, does this, does this, does this, goes to do that. And what it's doing is it's saying, take this, send it here by value and do this. So basically by value would try to make another copy. which is a big no-no with Q object. Q objects don't like to be copied. So what we're going to do here is just add that in by reference and then suddenly everything works as expected. So let's try to run this and see what would happen. As you guessed, we get a big fat crash, meaning it, the compiler's not even going to let it happen. And we get this very hard to decipher thing that says Q object has been explicitly marked deleted here and we're trying to figure out what's going on and if you click on it, you get this, which is not helpful at all. But you can see right here, Q disable copy. What that means is you cannot copy a Q object. Let's just scroll all the way up here. You can see there's a lot going on. All of this is what really makes Q object work under the hood. And because you can't copy a Q object, you avoid a lot of common pitfalls. That's one of the powerful features of Qt. This Qt disable copy will save you a ton of headaches. It may seem like kind of a pain that you have to remember to do this with your code, but you're going to avoid a lot of memory management issues in the future. Let's go ahead and fix this. And let's run it. Everything works as expected. I hope you enjoyed the video you just watched. That was a preview of one of the videos out in the Qt Core for Beginners with C++ course I have out on Udemy. I am going to be making an intermediate in advance, and then we're going to start working on GUI technologies. For example, showing buttons, lists, tree views, you name it, and then moving on to things like QML. Um, the reason why I've restarted this whole thing is if you're watching these videos out on YouTube, they are a little old. Um, this one was done in 2011. And the technology's changed over time. So because the technology's changed, some of these videos, as good as they are, really don't line up with the current Qt technology stack anymore. So I wanted to start from scratch. I hope to see you out on Udemy and also in the Voidrums Facebook group. See you there.